Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java and Raspberry Pi programming tutorial series. In this tutorial I'm going to explain uh, my previous tutorial for the super easy blinking LED. Uh, first thing we want to do is just head over to my website, pyjava.com slash pyprogramming. And um, I've got of course the old ME tutorials here and then I've got my SE standard edition ones here. We'll go ahead and click on this one here. So. Now this tutorial will pick right up from my super easy blinking LED tutorial. I will explain in detail how everything works, including go over, going over some specs on the Raspberry Pi board. Let's go ahead and start back up the LED blink program. So I'll just go ahead and minimize this, get this out of the way. I'm going to hop over into my Raspberry Pi here. We'll open up the terminal. And by the way, um, you know, if you haven't done my super easy blinking LED, you're going to want to do that because we're just we're just picking right back up where we left off. So we're going to change directories to the Java folder, change directories to the LED blink folder, and do Java LED blink. All right, and I'll move this into this window here, and I'm going to pull up my my Raspberry Pi here, and I stuck this black fabric behind here. And some of my previous videos, when the LED went on, like the reflection from the white uh, the white background behind it there would like reflect up into the into the camera lens and kind of flood it out a little bit there. So this this helps out a lot, absorbs a lot of the light there. Okay, so um, so we've got just our, our little blinking LED there, and I'll just go ahead and make this uh, super small there and pull this over here. Um, let's go ahead and open up another terminal here. And uh, we'll go ahead and change directories to the Java folder, change directories to the LED blink, and we'll do uh, leaf pad um, LED blink .java, which is the name of the source code file we created in the last video there. All right, um, so basically we are keeping the LED on for 500 milliseconds and then off for 500 milliseconds. Uh, 500 milliseconds is half a second. There's a thousand seconds or thousand milliseconds in a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, bring back over here. Though. So I want to just talk a little bit about uh, LED polarity. Now an LED has a positive lead and a negative lead. LED leads are often referred to as legs as well. As you may have already noticed, one leg is longer than the other. The longer leg is the positive lead and the shorter leg is the negative ground lead. If you put your LED into the circuit backwards, then nothing will happen. Let's go ahead and just come over here and uh, we'll unplug the LED. As this is running, that won't harm anything at all, right? And we'll unplug that and unplug that. Um, all right, what did I do with my little pointer thingy? Be around here somewhere. There it is. Okay. Um, so as you can see there, this leg over here is longer and this leg is shorter. So the positive lead is the longer one and the negative lead is the shorter one. Okay. So let's go ahead and put that in there. And basically, um, Negative is always represented as black, and positive is usually represented as red or sometimes white, uh, depending on that. But we're going to go with red here, so we'll plug the red into the longer one and the black into the shorter one. Okay, so we got our LED blinking again there. All right, uh, let's move on there. Pretty self-explanatory on that, but you wouldn't believe how many people are plug that in wrong and are like, okay, so. Um, now I did mention the term circuit. So what is a circuit? Now the term circuit is derived from the word circle and it's in its simplest form is essentially just that electricity flowing around in a circle. All right, let's pop back over here, right? So essentially the electricity is just flowing around in this circle here. Okay. And of course we're turning it on for half a second and turning it off for half a second. So, uh, let's continue on there. Now we can place all kinds of things in the circle of flowing electricity. In this tutorial, we placed an LED into the circle of electricity, aka the circuit. The abbreviation LED is short for light emitting diode, uh, which is a special kind of diode that lights up when electricity flows through it. Now the diode 
portion of LED is important because the diode only allows electricity to flow in one direction. So if you place an LED into the circuit backwards, the electricity can no longer flow around our circle. Right, and let's go ahead and just flip that LED around there. Remember the longer end is positive, so we'll, stick, we'll just simply do a 180 red on that one there. And as you can see, we no longer have a blinking LED. The electricity is getting stuck at the LED because the diode portion of it will only allow the electricity to flow through in one direction. So let's go ahead and flip that around, do another 180 on that. Okay. And we have our blinking LED back. All right, uh, moving on to the next thing I want to cover here. Um, the Java runtime class. Let's go ahead and just actually, no, I don't want to minimize that. I just want to make him smaller again. All right, so over here in our source code here, we've got the Java runtime class. Now, the runtime class has been around since day one and contains many useful methods. Um, the exec passing in a single string parameter method essentially does the same thing as opening up a terminal prompt and typing in the command parameter and pressing the enter key. Okay. Now, the method does return a process object, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I don't really care about that. Now, FYI, there are better ways of executing commands, but I'll save that for another time. So let's go ahead and try that here. Um, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and um, I'm going to try to hit control C while the LED is off. Up, oh, up. Yeah. All right, let's go up and let's try that again. Okay, there we go. So I got my LED off. Um, what the first thing I'm going to do is just, uh, let's move this over here, right? And we're gonna issue this command GPI mode four out, right? So if we type that in here, GPI O mode four out, right? It just comes right back to the prompt. Now I wanna show you what that does here in just a second there, right? Now, if the next thing we do is if we do this GPIO write for one, right? GPIO write for one. Oh, GPIO instead of GPOI. Okay. And you can see our LED just turned on right over here. Okay. And now the next thing we'll do is GPIO write for zero. So I'll just hit the up arrow on my keyboard and change that to a zero. Right, that goes off. And of course we're looping, so if I just keep hitting the up arrow and doing this, that, and the other, right? That's the, what the program is actually doing. We're issuing this GPIO write command on and off. All right, um, so now the next thing that I'd like to cover, um, I'm going to cover one more software topic in this tutorial, and that is wiring pi. Now the GPIO command that we executed is part of the Wiring Pi project that comes pre-installed on the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. We did not have to download and install anything, it just works straight out of the box. Now the Wiring Pi project was created by Gordon Henderson. You can check out uh, specifics at his website, wiringpi.com. Right, here it is right there. Um, one critical thing to be aware of is that Gordon created his, a custom pin numbering scheme that is based on the Arduino scheme instead of the Raspberry Pi. If that doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. You don't need to know about that. Uh, you just need to be aware of the differences between the two, which I've displayed below. So if you watched some of my ME tutorials here, you probably saw this one here, and this is the official pinout. Um, well, I created this, but it's it's the same pinouts from, from Raspberry Pi directly on what they call their GPIO ports, general purpose input output. For wiring pi right here, I created this one here and I just called them pins, right? Okay. So in our program here, we have uh, on, our, on our Raspberry Pi board here, right, we have our ground hooked up to the third pin over from the top there. Okay. And um, let's go ahead and move up, bring this over and we'll bring this up here, right? So you can see this is over to the one to third pin over, which is the ground, right? And we'll pop back over to here. 
And then pin four on the wiring pi scheme is basically one, two, three, four, five pins over, okay? Um, which is the same thing over here on the normal scheme as GPIO pin 23. All right, with that being said, uh, we're gonna count off four pins over and then go into the pin thing there, which is what we did in our last tutorial there. And as you can see, we've got, uh, you know, from this angle, I have to move it over just a little bit so you can make, see the, all the pins there. So none of them appear that they're hiding. But yeah, basically we've got one, two, three, four pins in between the, um, one right there, two, three, four, and then the fifth pin over there. So that's actually under the wiring pi scheme, pin four. All right, so if we go back to the commands that we issued over here, right? Um, the first command, GPIO, of course, is uh, part of the wiring pi commands. And then mode is just the next parameter or argument. In this particular case, we're gonna pass it. And then we're gonna say pin four, and we wanna do output, okay? Output means we're going to be writing stuff out to the port as opposed to waiting for stuff to come in, electronic signals or voltage to come in, okay? Um, so that's the differences of between there. Um, now, of course, we pass it one, which causes the LED to turn on, right? Um, right, one causes the LED to turn on which means that the pin has gone high, okay? And um, then we pass it zero, which means the pin has gone low, basically on and off. Now what exactly is on and off? And let's go ahead and do, that'll be kind of the last thing that I wanna go over here. So uh, the last thing I'm going to demonstrate in this tutorial is the output voltage when we turn a pin on and off. Now a pin can either be high, which is that number one, or low zero. There is nothing in between. Now a high pin has a voltage of approximately 3.3 volts, while a low pin has a voltage of approximately zero volts. Let's take a look at those numbers with a multimeter. So before we do that, I'm gonna get this off the screen here. I'm gonna come back here, and I'm gonna change these values to, um, let's go for example three, no, let's go five seconds, which is 5,000 milliseconds, and then we'll leave it off for like three, no, you know what, we'll leave it off. We'll make it even, right? Four and four, right? Uh, come over here, save this, pop open to, oh, yeah, um, I didn't want that one up. So, you know, let's just go ahead and maximize this. Scoot this over a little bit there. Um, I'm going to do Java C, LED blink dot Java to compile our source code file, right? And then I'm going to do Java. LED blink to execute it there. All right, and so when we execute that, you can see that the uh, LED will stay on for five seconds, right? And then it'll go off for five seconds. And of course, we've got our circle of electricity, our flow, right? And AKA our circuit there, okay? All right, let's go ahead and hook up a multimeter to this whole thing here. So I'm gonna... Go ahead and unplug this directly from there and unplug that and set that aside and bring it up to my, my multimeter here. Let's see if I can kind of get it all into the shot here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got the, uh, I'm just going to hook these, these right up here. And then we'll count off one, two, three, four pins and place this on the fifth pin over. Okay. All right, and let's get the multimeter in there. I think we have to scoot this out just a little bit more. I got a nasty shadow on that, don't I? Yeah, but that's okay. You guys can see that it goes from 3.25 volts to zero volts. Okay, so um, so basically the uh, the pin is, well, from the Raspberry Pi official documentation, it's actually 3.3 volts, but as you can see, it's off just a little bit. So there really isn't anything in between high or low. It's not like you can set the voltage at like two point something or other volts. It either comes out high, which is 3.3 volts or approximately 3.3, 3.25, or it's low and zero. When you see those numbers change on the, um, on the multimeter there, right? That's just basically like some fallout from the, the meter itself. It really isn't going from like the tube and whatever. So 
And so, let's see. So anyway, so basically the point that I was trying to make there is that uh, that you either have a high pin voltage of 3.3 or a low of zero, approximately 3.3 or a low of zero there. Um, so anyway, uh, that, uh, that pretty much concludes this tutorial. Stay tuned for my next tutorial. I'll demonstrate the important relationship between voltage and time. I'm going to clear out of that. Clear out of that. Thanks for watching.